My name is uh, Karin Anberger and I am an industrial designer from Sweden and uh, I'm doing a PhD about gender and design right now. Could you introduce us to the concept of critical design? The concept of critical design is when you, uh, I mean you can do it in different ways, but I am creating objects which are uh, aimed to create a discussion instead of uh, putting objects out in the market for selling. So uh, it's a discussion objects and uh, the, the critical part of it is that um, I question norms in the society which are invisible. So uh, how I use critical design is to visualize the norms, you could say. In which way does design reproduce the existent gender roles? When you design a product, you design towards needs. And uh, uh, many times these needs are gendered. I mean, you separate, separate men and women and their needs. Uh, so if you say that you're designed towards a woman, you uh, think of her as um, a stereotype with uh, certain needs, certain uh, way of thinking. Uh, that she uh, have characteristics that are um, very normative and so on. And when you design for men, it's uh, the opposite. So uh, we tend to design things with uh, that person's uh, in mind and it becomes very stereotype and very normative in the very design, in the very aesthetics. But it, it, can, have, it can do with the ergonomics, for example, too. Like if you s design a, uh, a chair for gynecological uh, setups, um, you think in advance that it's a, a healthy person, a healthy woman uh, with average measures. Uh, maybe she's heterosexual. I mean, if a, a woman is too heavy, it's not easy to get up in the chair if she's too small, it's not easy to get up in the chair. So uh, you uh, have this average woman in mind when you design it, which makes it um, uh, very hard for people that is not um, measuring to the norm to use these products around us. You have designed several conceptual objects. Could you tell us more about them? Uh, I have, for example, designed two tools. Uh, two hand tools. Uh, one is a drill, a power drill, and the other is a hand mixer. And I wanted to I exchange the form language uh, because then it becomes, uh, I mean, the, the norm becomes vis visible. And um, I wanted to show that when we design uh, a hand blender, for example, we think of it, of course, it's going to be in the kitchen. And the kitchen is gendered. And who's in the kitchen? We, we presume that it's a woman in the kitchen. So we use a certain form language, certain functions, uh, and um, uh, certain options in these products, uh, which are based on our stereotypical thinking of a woman and her needs and her wishes. And the same goes for the power drill. We design for it to be in the garage, perhaps, and uh, who is in the garage? <laughs> it's uh, often the man. And uh, what is he doing there? Well, he uses this power drill and he wants to drill and it's a very heavy activity and he's very active and so on. So the design is a result of that thinking. Have you tried to pitch this idea to any major brands? Some of Sweden's uh, biggest company uh, have contacted me and uh, they have expressed that they are very happy that I have brought this up to discussion because obviously there is something that is discussed in the design team uh, whether to, who are we designing for and uh, whose needs do we, uh, the, um, what are the needs that we design for? Uh, and uh, I think that there have been a few changes. I mean, 10 years ago when I looked at uh, hand blenders and drills. Uh, you could see, you could choose between 20 hand drills, uh, power drills, and uh, just five uh, hand blenders. But today, you know, the, the, a lot have happened so, uh, in just 10 years. So I'm very positive. <laughs>